G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and for today's video I'm going to show you how you can delete rows in your data extensions using server-side JavaScript. So why would you want to delete rows using server-side JavaScript? Well unfortunately the SQL options in Salesforce Marketing Cloud only allow you to append, update or overwrite records. That means there's no easy way to delete using records using SQL. You could choose to overwrite the data, replacing the existing data with your new data, but that can cause problems for active data extensions used for sending, as it can cause errors for your customers when they click the view as a web page link. So we need an elegant solution to delete records from a data extension that does not reorder the existing data. And for this, we can use some server-side JavaScript. So as always, the best way to show how this works is to demonstrate it in Marketing Cloud. Now I've gone ahead and created some sample data for us to use today. I've uploaded a 100 records to delete rows CSV file onto GitHub. I'll put the link in the description below. You can click on the raw link here and then download the file for yourself. Now I'm going to zoom ahead and create a data extension with each of the fields listed in this CSV file so we can upload the data and move on to our next step. So here is my complete data extension with the 100 records imported. Now I do have my GUID as my primary key and all the rest are nullable. If I jump into my records, I can have a look for myself and see that we do have a few records that have the active flag as true, they are active records, and some where the active flag is zero, they are inactive. That's these inactive records we're going to try and delete today with some SSJS. Let's now jump in and create ourselves a testing platform to make some SSJS code. I'll put a link in the description below of how I've done this previously, but quite simply, it's going to be a cloud page which uses a content block by ID so we can test out our code for ourselves. You can see here I have my SSJS delete records, let's delete some records, and a cloud page ready to go with my result on it, which means I can very quickly jump in, modify my script, save it, and then refresh my cloud page to see the results straight away. In our server-side JavaScript documentation, we have access to our data extension functions, including the delete data function. This function allows us to specify a data extension as well as a name and value criteria to delete rows from. As you can see from the example here, we are specifying the data extension called customer data. We're going to delete all records where the last name is equal to Smith. So having a look at our example data, we in fact have a data extension, 100 records with rows to delete, and a field called active, which we're going to try and delete records with a value of zero. So this function is going to be a great use case for us. Let's jump in and copy our example code here. We'll then go back into our content builder and let's paste it into our testing block here. So our data extension name is not customer data. Our data extension name is called 100 records with rows to delete. So I'll copy that data extension name and paste it into our function. The field name is called active. I can see there it's called active. So I'll copy the field name as well. And with the number field, we can go back into our code here. It's not going to be a text field for zero. We have to remove those quotation marks, it's just the number of zero. So quite easily, find from this data extension all records where the active field has a zero value and delete that data. So let's try that for ourselves. We'll go save and quite simply, we're going to refresh this page. Now there's no output for the page, so it's going to run the function as it has. There's no output there. But if I jump back now into my data extensions and I have a look at my folder, hopefully we see we've deleted a few rows and we have, there's now only 89 records remaining deleted a few of those records. Now we can check this out for ourselves by going to our sample data and having a look to see how many have the active flag of zero. We in fact have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and hopefully there's one more, eleven. Great, so all eleven records have now been deleted from that data extension. So what can we do if the deletion criteria is more complex? For example, what if we're trying to remove rows from our data extension where the date of birth is after the year 2000? If I check out my records here, I'll hopefully find a few records who are born after the year 2000, and sure enough, there's one there. So our previous delete data function allowed us to work because we had a specific value to search on, where active was equal to zero. But what about now, where date of birth has to be greater than the year 2000? Well, lucky for us, there is a function we can do for this. In our server-side JavaScript documentation, we can start to use some of the rows functions. The rows retrieve call here allows us to return back up to 2,500 records using a filter criteria. So let's try that for ourselves. I can copy this criteria and jump straight into my content and paste it in here. Now we'll have to load in the core library. So I'll use the platform .load. We're going to load in our core version 1. 
that platform function is loaded, we can then call our data extension functions. Now, the data extension function here is going to initialize the data extension based on its external key. So, jump into our data extension, go to our properties tab, and copy the external key. Copying that value and pasting it into our function here. We'll call this one not our birthday DE, but we'll call this one my DE. So my DE, we can then use this filter for and returning back the rows from my DE, retrieving using that filter. Now the filter will not be on age, we're going to use our date of birth field. So I'll copy my date of birth field. Your date of birth is going to be greater than, the year of birth is going to be greater than what value? Well, it's going to be a value of 2000-01-01. That's going to be our year to search for. Any date of births that are greater than that, we want to return back the rows for. I'm going to comment out this one for now, and let's see how many rows we get back. So I'm going to write, I'm going to write back the count of rows. So data.length, and we'll try this out for ourselves. So returning back how many rows existed from this filter, we'll go save, Let's now refresh our cloud page and hopefully we get an output and there are five records remaining that have a date of birth over the year 2000. Perfect. So we have our five records, that's all good and well, but now how do we delete these five records from the data extension? Well, since we have our five records in our data attribute here, we can now iterate through them with a for loop. So let's type out our for loop. It's going to be for in our criteria and then our loop. And our for function reads, where i begins at zero until i, or while i, is less than the data.length. We will continue to iterate through i plus plus, and our loop will look like this. And inside our loop, we can run our platform delete data function. So I'll simply copy up this function here and paste it in. Since we are deleting from the same data extension, we can leave the name there. It won't be where the active field is equal to zero. Instead, we can use each of the subscriber records GUID. So we'll jump into our records so here. We can see GUID is our unique key. So we can say, delete the GUID. Now, what value for each of these five records will the GUID be? Well, it's going to be the data payload of information on the I attribute level or the I row, looking at the GUID value. So to make sure it works, we can also do a write function each time we delete one of these records, we're going to write out that value of the GUID, followed by a line break. So I'll go plus br. So each time it writes out one of these new records, it's going to be deleting it from a data extension. You can comment out that box there, and let's give it a try. I'll go save, and now I'll refresh my cloud page. And hopefully we see five GUIDs output, and there we are, five records. Now we did have 89 records originally, Minus five means hopefully there's just 84 records remaining. Indeed there is, perfect. So let's summarize our code one more time. We are using the server-side JavaScript call loading in the core library. We use the data extension initialization function to create the external key from our data extension, saving this as a value, the myDE. We then use a filter property within our rows retrieve function using the filter, a simple filter with a DOB, the date of birth, was greater than a date value. It finds those rows which we then iterate through using our for loop, and for each of those rows, we look up that data extension and where the GUID field name contains the data for each of those subscribers, we're going to delete that row. We then print out the GUID, so we have it as a list of all the rows that were deleted. With that done, we could transpose this SSJS code into a script activity in Automation Studio, so we could automate this if you wanted to, making it run every hour or every day, to clean up our data extensions to remove inactive customers. And I hope this server-side JavaScript code walkthrough has helped you out today and allows you to delete some records from your main data extensions. If you have enjoyed it, then please let me know in the comments below and give the video a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.